Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission for the month of November. Today is Thursday, November 19th. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Stepanian? Present. Lee? Present. Pierre Hovanesian? Here. Solis? Here. Wagner? Gregorian? I'm here. Chairperson K. Banyan? Here. Next item, please. Item two, consent items. Hmm. Approval of regular commission meeting minutes from September 17th, 2009 at 2 p.m. Move to approve. Second. All right. Uh, Commis oh. Commissioner Stepanian? Abstain. Lee? Yes. Derho Vanessian? Yes. Solis? Yes. Wagner? Commission. I'm sorry, Gregorian? Yes. Chairperson K. Vanyan. Yes. Next item. Item 3, Introductions and Presentations. At 3A, Exhibition of New Art Banners at the Adams Square Mini Gas Station. Present, presentation by Arlene Vidor. Well, um, I received an email from Arlene Vidor. She requested to uh, postpone her presentation for next month, or maybe January. So we will go ahead and um, invite our next presenter, uh, Carmen Foley. Um, she is a Glendale resident and an artist, and uh, she would like to talk to you about her um, Red Robert Art and Craft Market. Arts and Craft Market. Hi. Uh, good You're afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk, talk to you about a presentation about a show I'm putting together December 6th. Um, I'm, pu I'm organizing a craft show. It's called the Red Rabbit Holiday Arts and Crafts Show. It's going to be at Descanso Garden December 6th. It's a Sunday. And um, we're going to have about 30 vendors and a full schedule of free workshops. Um, and the show is free once you pay admission to go into Descanso Gardens, which is $8 for um, adults and $3 for children. Now, Red Rabbit originally started as a group of glass workers, glass artists, and um, we'd get together regular maybe every couple months and have lunch at Acapulco over on uh, Pacific and we talk about all things arts and craft and at one point we said we should put on a show. So we did our first show last December at Descanso and it was really successful. We had um, in six hours we did, we had close to ten thousand dollars in sales um, with 27 vendors. So and we were able to give a portion of those sales back to Descanso. We were really, we were really happy with that. Now these are these are some of the vendors we're going to have our, at, our at our upcoming show. Um, there's a little over 30 of them. Uh, we've got people working in glass, metal, fiber. Um, we have some mother-daughter teams, uh, some husband and wife's teams. Um, a handful of them are from the Burbank and Glendale area. Um, some of them are coming as far as uh, Rancho Santa Margarita and Castaic. Um, what's different about this show is that our emphasis on um, education. So we're going to have a lot of craft workshops, and we've had to be really clever and come up with inexpensive ways, inexpensive materials, um, so we could teach a lot of people. So in the top left corner, that was actually made by a 10-year-old girl, and they're die-cut flowers made out of soda cans and chopsticks. The bottom is soda cans and um, coffee sleeves with buttons and wire, really inexpensive. The top is actually broken glass uh, bro that's been tumbled so you get the sharp edges off of it and wire wrapped it. For little kids, we had them wrap rocks and little wooden things. Um, and the, the emphasis on these is teaching skills. We're teaching them wire wrapping, something they can actually walk away with afterwards. Um, so the classes have been really fun and really popular. We added those when we did our second show at the Arboretum last July. And so we're going to continue with those and add more. Um, now, in, in teaching and putting together these, these shows, I noticed that there were a lot of artists who, although they had um, had long careers in the arts and crafts and showing in galleries and selling in stores, a lot of them weren't up to date on their computer skills. So I came up with this series of workshops, and I actually taught this to a lot of artists um, at the Sadas Festival down in Laguna in between um, their summer and their winter show. 
Um, and we taught them just basic things. How do you make a business card? How do you take a digital picture? Things that very practical, very brief, two hours, you walk in, I'll show you how, and they're all free. We do them in small groups, three or four people. And we're implementing this with our upcoming show so that the artists, it's a good thing to go and have a place to go and sell for that one day, but we think if you can walk away with a skill that you can go and implement in your business later, even better, everybody wins. So, um, so uh, the Red Rabbit, so it's going to be December 6th, and I just wanted to respectfully submit this to Glendale as something that, because we're ready to expand a little more. We've outgrown our space um, in, at uh, Van Camp Hall at Descanso, so 30 people, and I think, I think there's enough interest that we can go bigger. So I would love to bring this to Glendale, and I just wanted to present this as maybe an idea that could find a home here in Glendale. So there you go. Thank you. I hope you come and make something cool and have fun, and it'll be fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Do any of my colleagues have any questions? Can, can you say the date and time again, please? December 6th. Uh, it's a Sunday um, uh, next month. At the Disconso Gardens. At Disconso Gardens. And if you go to our website, redrabbitworkshop.com, there's a map there and more details. Do you have any flyers? I do. I have postcards. Shall I put okay, them in the please? back? Or, or you can just pass them. Okay. Yes. And, <clears throat> and the time? Uh, 9.30 to 3.30. Thank you. Thank you. No reservations needed? No reservations. Just show up. <laughs> So the workshops, like, they start from 8.30, from 9.30, half an hour, or how do, because if I want to send some of our staff to come and get some of the little kind of workshops. Oh, the craft workshops, work? the craft workshops, which we'll be teaching that day, we're going to start them about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, that'll give us time to set up with the vendors and everything. 11 o'clock to, we'll do the last one about 3.30. Um, they run about 45 minutes each. The digital classes, that is more um, whenever I get interest, I put together a group and we all meet at someone's house. So, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Uh, we, we're going <coughs> to procedurally, we, we kind of skipped over uh, something in item one, so uh, I'll have staff go right back to it. Item one, the agenda for the November 19th meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on November 13th, 2009. Great. Now that that's done over with. Uh, I apologize for being late. Oh, that's totally okay. Uh, next item. Item four, oral communications. And I'm presuming we have none. None. <laughs> Looking at the audience. Uh, next item, please. Item five, business agenda, 5A action items. At 5A1, approval of Rachmaninoff Junior Piano Competition Committee's recommendation to the City Council. To that we go over to rips me. Yes. <laughs> As you remember, at the September commission meeting, we formed a committee mm -hmm. consisting of four commissioners, two uh, from Arts and Culture Commission and two subcommittee. Um, we had an advisory group subcommittee, and uh, the final name became a subcommittee. Um, and two commissioners from Parks, Recreations, and Community Services um, Commissions to meet with um, uh, Mr. Armen uh, Der Tatevosian, the organizer of the Rachmaninoff Junior Piano Competition, to determine the needs uh, of the proposed piano competition and help direct him to sources of revenue in the community and explore the feasibility of supporting the said junior um, competition in Glendale. Since then, the committee has met um, with um, Mr. Tatevosian several times and um, uh, collected all the necessary information and documentation. And based on that information, um, they um, met again, the committee met again on Friday, November 13, 2009, and passed a motion recommending the following to the City Council. Uh, to contribute $50,000 as seed money to international competitions and festivals, to uh, appoint members to a fundraising committee to assist ICF, the International Competition and Festivals, in raising the necessary funds for the project. And third, um, to give direction to the city attorney to draft an agreement and then give direction to parks to negotiate the business details on how profit and loss will be addressed. 
since this is an important uh, musical event for the residents of um, and visitors to the city, uh, staff is recommending that the Arts and Culture Commission approves the committee's recommendation to the city council. That's my report. Any questions, comments? Yes, but uh, this is not ICNF. ICNF stands for International Festivals and com um, International Competitions and Festivals. Where, where are they? What, who are they? Where are they based? It's a non-profit organization who does uh, piano competitions, and they have been established since 2002. And the past seven years, they have done three uh, international piano festivals and competitions in Pasadena downtown. There was a presentation uh, made. Um, once or twice um, by the founder to the council and to the commission as well too. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Wagner. Um, the seed money that's being suggested, does that come out of a particular budget? There currently is no money in our budget for that. That would be something that the city council would have to take up. From, if they want to fund it. From something. Yes. And the total estimated cost of the that seed money is just part of what, what was the, the? The seed money would, uh, I don't know, Director Traffic, do you want to answer this? Sure. Uh, this, the seed money is one part of it. Um, I think he's asking in essence for three parts. One is 50000 from the city. He would raise another 50000 from outside the city. And what he's requesting is the city council appoint a committee or fundraising committee that would help him raise the additional uh, anywhere between fifty to seventy thousand dollars that's needed. So I think all told, the budget kind of it it's not exact at this point. It's between one sixty seven to somewhere around two hundred fifty thousand. But um, he's expecting the additional help from local residents, people who may be interested in this festival in terms of raising that money. Additional questions? So, as, a, as, a, as an answer, um, uh, further answer, um, I understand that he has some commitments from some private organizations for in-kind donations. Uh, these in-kind uh, donation values are also included in this uh, budget, 160 to uh, 250,000. And uh, my understanding is that uh, we as a subcommittee and also as a commission, uh, we do not really make a decision on uh, what the, uh, whether we should spend 50000 or not. I think basically what we have to do is recommend to the City Council that this competition, if we believe, uh, is, a, is a good competition. It will bring a lot of uh, uh, attention and business to Glendale. So we will recommend the City Council to consider it, and then it will be up to the City Council to decide whether they want to allocate the 50000 whether they don't, whether they can have private uh, funds or private donations donators, uh, donors, or, you know, other sources to come up with that 50000 So the 50000 may not directly come out of the city budget at all, but he is expecting the city to put some kind of a weight behind this so that we can get, hopefully, some donations. And his initial expectation was that the city council uh, should come up with um, $50,000 out of city budget and city general fund or coffers or even their own private uh, bank accounts. But I don't think that is ever going to happen. Uh, so our recommendation basically is not, yes, let's spend the 50000 or let's give them the 50000 The recommendation, I hope, is going to be that this is a good competition. Let's explore all the possibilities. And if necessary, let's uh, uh, put the $50,000 seed money up front so that he can start. But I think there is a lot of... Uh, details to be worked out, like where this 50000 is needed, where it's going to go, if the competition makes money, then how do we get refund, uh, do we get reimbursed of that 50000 etc., etc. Most of these details are not worked out yet. So as soon as the city council decides that, yes, it is a good uh, project. A, a project to move forward, then I think all these other details have to be worked out through the city uh, attorney's office and with uh, with uh, with the um, uh, ICF and with the commission, etc. And let me just clarify: this is not a staff recommendation. This is the recommendation from the commission, so from the subcommittee, on, on yes, the right. committee. Sorry, what committee? The committee that was formed of four right. uh, commissioners. 
two from this commission and two from the Parks and Recreation but, Commission. But, but, yeah. but staff is recommending that we approve the recommendation. The committee's recommendation. The subcommittee's recommendation. Approves. And, uh, and one of those details that we somebody should tell us is uh, what what was the scope of scale and the impact of the, their previous uh, competitions, the ones you mentioned in Pasadena, and uh, uh, if you know. Uh, All that information was provided to the committee members who were uh, voluntarily um, wanted to explore. All the details about the business and um, uh, the project. Uh, we didn't have the the opportunity to share all this detail. I mean, we were not directed to give all these other um, details to the commission at this point. But uh, once it's been directed, then we'll be more than happy to send you all the other information that was provided to the committee members. Uh, we had two commissioners who volunteered to be part of that committee at our September meeting. Um, I can tell you that um, the competition in Pasadena in 2002 was his first competition. Um, there was a little rocky to get off, but once the, uh, the event took place, it was very well received, apparently, in the city of Pasadena. Um, and I think, Commissioner Kavan, you may have attended that. I, don't, I, don't I, I attended the... Um the competition that was held jointly at uh, in, in Pasadena Disney. and in Walt Disney Hall, uh, that was in 2008. Okay. Oh. I have a question. So is the Parks Commission going to vote on this as well? The same report will go to the Parks Commission as well. So, and this is what the City Council get, this paper? Or, you know, with these bullet points? No, a full report will be prepared for the Council. But we're recommending that the so, but we're recommending that the council contribute fifty thousand dollars. The committee recommends. Well, well we're us. being asked. So to, we're being asked. We're so being we're asked. recommending in the end that to contribute fifty thousand dollars as C money to I C and F. Correct. Correct. Um, and also, he, he so he doesn't have some sort of a nonprofit group, a board, because I see also it says to appoint members to a fundraising committee. Uh, so. He, from our understanding, he does have a, he is a nonprofit organization. Um, the fundraising committee is what he requested to raise the additional money that may be needed for the uh, will be needed for this event. What he generally does, my understanding is, he'll go into a community and have that community raise the money for the event, most of the money. For example, in Pasadena, that was a million dollar um, budget for that event. That community raised two hundred thousand dollars. Of the and he raised the other eight hundred thousand through his networking, through his fundraising network. We believe the committee felt very comfortable knowing that Glendale Arts is going to be the fiscal um, um, organization to work with um, international uh, competitions and uh, festival company organizers, and um, working with them who will take care of the. Financial um, issues uh, will. Now you can recommend. The well. recommendation is what he what he needs is the fifty thousand. Without the seed money, he's not going to be able to do this this function. Um, that doesn't mean the council will appropriate it. It would just be your recommendation to the council that you think this is a worthwhile project for Glendale for various reasons, and you would recommend that the city somehow find fifty thousand uh, seed money. That's not to say that they would fund it. Um, it still has to go to the city council. Well, it, it, it def, that's definitely one of the vague and uh, kind of sticking points. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars in today, uh, you generally anyway, and in today's economy is a lot of uh, dough that uh, the city can spend in all kinds of other areas. Um, and uh, one of the concerns is that whether we would have that budget or not. Um, However, uh, and, and one thing which is not clear is, let's say if the city council puts the 50000 up front and this competition for whatever reason doesn't go forward, then what happens to that $50,000? So this is a major question that uh, we have to ask. But we, um, as a commission, are not the uh, body to make that final decision. Our, this, uh, our recommendation, my understanding is, that we are going to recommend the city council that this is a a good project to look into, 
this is these are the facts the 50,000 etc etc and we think that this uh, competition will bring a lot of prestige and uh, name recognition and also business and other uh, things to Glendale and if the city council wants to move forward then the decision is ultimately up to the city council we are not making that decision but the city council should be aware that it is expected to approve or get $50,000 from somewhere to get this thing going. So our recommendation is not that let's go and spend the 50000 right. Our recommendation is just to notify the city council that this is what is needed. And then they will make the decision. Okay. Um, well, I understand that part of the deal. But I think to be able to make an intelligent recommendation, there should be a brief report. That means the people who are representing from our commission are in that committee. They would give a brief explanation or some information. I guess that we all love Rahman, you know, we all love to have our youngsters to have a competition. But the fact is that how would that impact our community? As, as um, Commissioner Stepanian said, what was the impact before? <coughs> what was the revenue, some of that information, I know otherwise we'll say we love Rahman, let's go for it. But to give us a little bit more information so we could just do the proper recommendation to the council, that's my opinion. Otherwise, how I would be, even though I would love that project, I cannot make any recommendations if I have no information on it. Well, well I think the committee spent three meetings on, on this topic right, and we went through a number of budgets that were presented by Mr. Tirta Tevosian. Um, we had a lot of the answers question uh, a lot of the questions answered, um, including what would happen mm -hmm. if you if the city did give you fifty thousand and, and wasn't able to raise the rest of it. And that was a little murky for me because yes. he said he would still continue and, and do the competition, would find a way to get the money, is I think what he said. Right. Um, there is there is a lot of unanswered questions, but as would be with something that you're kind of starting from scratch, he, he you can't you can't already you know imagine in your mind how many tickets you're going to sell without even knowing how many competitors you have. You, you can't you can't calculate everything. You can't have this down to a T. It's just it's impossible. But and also, let's understand that this is a work in progress. Right. We don't really have a final result yet, and we may not have a final result for quite a while. But, you know, to make progress, we really have to go through all these steps. Um, and also, one other th uh, source of income that I, my understanding is that um, this committee or subcommittee will, will have is my understanding is that the uh, competitors, whoever wants to apply, have to put an application and an application fee. So the, uh, some of the funds might be raised from that source also. Uh, l l like I said, I mean, if we're, not, we're not right now in the, in the position to make any kind of you know, conjectures as to how he's going to make the money or raise the money. That's not, that's not really the purview of... Uh, of really this, this subcommittee. It was just to see if this was a viable option to invest for up to right now city time mm -hmm. basically into dis discussing and there was even a little bit of, you know, uh, not not a negotiation process, but we, we definitely looked at what he was offering and and we said, you know, this is what the city can offer at, at you know, at minimal uh, effect to all parties. And, and he, and you know, he realized that, you know, some things are not as possible as he he wanted it. For example, the fifty thousand dollars coming out of the you know city funds, and we just we all kind of just laughed. But uh, as a subcommittee, but uh, why did was, you laugh? Well, it's it's fairly uh, unreasonable with the current economic situation of the city to expect you know fifty thousand dollars to just you know happen at the snap of fingertips. So uh, with that said, uh, but I said like so. What are we sorry? What are we recommending? We're recommending that we like Rachmaninoff, or are we recommending this a good venue, or recommending that this would be a prosper? What is the thing we are going to recommend, though? Bruce May, can I have you reread re re the, <laughs> the? What what my understanding again is what we are recommending <laughs> is I think I said it a few minutes ago that this is a very good project. It it has. Uh, a huge potential of not only benefiting the cultural life of the city, but also bring recognition to the city internationally, and also bring a lot of business comp uh, based on this and related to these activities to Glendale. Such as? 
Well, the competition will take several weeks. Um, uh, you know, there will be concerts. People will come here to go to the concert. They will use, you know, uh, the local restaurants. They will go to local shops. Um, you know, uh, the... the um, for instance, my understanding is, and this is just you know a personal feeling. I'm not quite sure if this will actually be actually, true or this not. This is what I try to hear <laughs> yes. because that's what people and our audience you know, also. The, um, uh, I, I understand that Mr. Tertatevosian has already secured a uh, an agreement or understanding at least with Steinway uh, Pianos, and who are internationally known excellent uh, piano uh, uh, manufacturers. Um, the Steinway will uh, provide him, I believe, up to 30 uh, either baby grands or grand royal pianos for people to either rehearse on or uh, have the competition. We have a local piano store here who is not doing as good as hopefully they should have. So maybe all of these related things will kind of elevate uh, the business in that side. Again, I, I really don't know. I haven't really done it, a personal research of it, and I don't have any data to, to be able to give you exact things. But obviously, when you have an internationally known uh, competition like this, I'm sure people who come from outside Glendale will fill up hotel rooms, will uh, go to local restaurants, will go to local shops, and all of this will um, you know, uh, uh, stimulate uh, a lot of business activity around. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. Besides the fact that we like the composer and the competition. No, the composer has nothing to do with this. It's only his name on this competition. Well, basically, it depends. Well, some people have special affinity towards him. But it, it, to give some, some data, some information, so when you say, okay, this sounds feasible, this seems logical, then we could say, okay, let's recommend. Otherwise, just to recommend on based on nothing, no information, no, no discussion. Let's understand that most of the competitors will be coming with a team small or mid-sized team from abroad. They need accommodation. So hotels and businesses and restaurants. That's, and one, of the, that's one of the immediate benefits that we can get. And one of the things that happened in Pasadena was the, the local community actually uh, uh, invited some of the competitors to their house. They, so they stayed in, in some of the houses of the... Uh, Which is what they usually do with competitions. Right. They usually don't go on. Yeah. And actually, actually, uh, my understanding is Steinways have, have even agreed to put their pianos in some of these private homes, in, if necessary, for the competitors to, um, to uh, practice. What a delight to have one of those young, aspiring artists. I'm thinking of opening my home to them. <laughs> if, if I get a piano, that would be a bad idea. But then the <clears throat> piano is returned, though. Of course, yes. But I don't play the piano, so what can I do? It's a to have one of them. <laughs> very good. Very interesting. Commissioner Lee? My only concern right now is I, I, I would vote for it. But my concern is that since if our commission as a whole says that this is a good project, my concern is that city council is going to say, well, you guys are recommending it. Why don't we take some of that fifty thousand from your budget? That is only my, that is my biggest concern. As it is, we don't have enough money to fund all our pro, our current projects already, and we have to do the cuts as as we recommended. So my my concern is if I if to be part of the language is that we we as a commission if we vote to uh, to recommend it, but not take anything from our own budget. Well, they, if, they, I they that, um, like if I may answer that, if I may answer that, first of all, I don't think uh, the city council would say that because what we are, uh, first of all, they have the right to say that. You know, if they think that this budget has to come from a certain place, then pr through the proper channels and through the director of the Parks and Rec, they will do that. Number two is the, uh, the budgets are always decided at least a year in advance and all that. So. Um, uh, the, to this year's budget, my understanding is until April at least, or until June, is completely spent. We may even have a little bit of a deficit in there or not. I'm not quite sure about that. But that's just not possible for the city to say that. If they say they have the right to ask that, but if if at all they decide to put that 50000 it might come out of the general fund or some other way of uh, they, they might find out. I don't know. That's not that's not our realm of decision making. Correct, there's but, but it, it they won't ask from us. There's, there, there's no way that that, that scenario no way. Will, will 
come to pass. Uh, Director <coughs> Chapman might have further comment on that. No, it's just that I think the, this budget has taken a uh, cut already, so um, it would be hard to take further money. But again, it's City Council's prerogative. Correct, but that, like I said, that's that's my only concern is that since there's already no money out there, and then they, they said, oh, well, hey, you can't take anything if there's no money out there, right? Well, no, they they can take from our budget. We don't have a budget. I, I think that's, it, that's the first thing. Yeah, I, I think if the council is interested in it, they will probably ask the city manager to find some money. Okay. I said that that's my only concern. I just don't because our our the. The projects that we want to do already are already cut, and and we, we got to skim down on it. And I, I prefer us to concentrate on the, all those. You know, this is this is going to be a very good competition and very good for. <coughs> but in the meantime, all the other works that we're working on, I feel that it's more prominent than this at this point. You know, f for us as a commission. Mr. Chairman, I make a mo motion uh, for that, Commissioner Solis. I think, yeah, this is a great competition. I would, I would love to have it. I'm, I'll vote for it. I think we got to remember that he's coming from Pasadena, where they raise millions of dollars in their art fund. They have the Rose Parade. They have, I mean, their art fund is huge. Well, let me clarify. Um, that money was raised by the mayor of Pasadena and his personal network. Two hundred thousand dollars was raised by the mayor of Pasadena. So how much did the city of Pasadena give? Did it, the city didn't put any they money didn't put into any it. Money. So, so what about seed money? Did the city put any seed money? No. So then, why are we? Why, why is he even asking? That's the request at this point. That changes everything. Again, as, as Commissioner uh, Gregorian said, he was at one point he also suggested, and that was a suggestion from him, that each council member raise 10000 $10, out of their personal funds. It was a suggestion because... That I mean, was his suggestion. Right. He, he's never worked at the city right. of Glendale, so he has no idea you know, what, right. what may or may not come to pass. Commissioner Wagner, do you have a... I, I wonder, well, a couple of things. First of all, what what is the target date for this? Is there a target date? October of October 2010. 2010. Okay. <coughs> um, secured another day um, in January. They deserve oh, a... 2011? We, they deserve yes. a, back, yes, a, a reserve date in case... Uh, they don't make it by October. They don't have enough competitors, for example, or the quality they want. I, I have two. Um, one... I wonder how, how you'd all feel if we were to, if our recommendation were to be a little different and, and to say, uh, to assist in raising 50000 as seed money to ICNF. Asking assist who? To, to assist ICF for the council. This is, a, this is a request going to the council to ask them to assist in raising as a, you know, as as a personal effort or as a as a council effort with without saying take it out of your budget i'm sorry i can't ask them to take put 50,000 there and then be asking them for 50,000 for a a field or a or a, an sro or, a, or you know i i have a problem with that and i it feels a little um unreasonable at this point but to assist to get behind it is what we're asking them to do and to and to Put themselves, put themselves forward. I mean, that's. I would feel more comfortable with that. I also wonder if, rather than just ask them to appoint a fundraising committee, it seems to me that the Arts and Culture Commission, to, if we are, if if we are recommending it, and if Parks and Rec is recommending it, then you know maybe they would work with members of Parks and Rec and Arts and Culture. To, hey, rather than ask them to, you know, create a whole new committee, that we take more responsibility if we're putting it forward to to be on that committee to represent. To comment on on your comments, the fifty thousand uh, dollar contribution, like like I said, these these numbers and these terms, these ideas, came out of a lot of discussion. So we were, this is not we didn't pick like arbitrary wording to. Uh, you know, to ask city council to contribute fifty thousand dollars as seed money. Th those are particularly spe specific words, and there is, there are two sides to this, and you have to consider Mr. Tatevosian's side as well, because he is the one who's you know stipulating certain things in this. He he is the one who said that he wa he needs city council of city city the city of Glendale to contribute fifty thousand dollars, 
to the organization. So for us to, to mess around with the wording of that is going to further complicate the matter because when it goes to city council and then they sit down and talk to Mr. Tertot of Osan, he's going to say, wait a minute, I didn't agree to that at all. And it's going to go back and th- th- there would be no point for the subcommittee. Number two, about the appointing of the fundraising committee. There are, there are people who serve on this commission and I'm, I'm including myself as one of those that are not experts in how to fundraise. Where I, I may not have the connections, may not have the know-how on how to do that, how to, how to facilitate that. So that, that's why we're asked, that's why this, uh, uh, this recommendation is asking for city council to appoint people who, who know how to do that and to, who, who can, we can have 30 people from commissioners and so forth who are involved in this attempt to raise funds, but it might take one person who has the expertise on how to do that to sit there and raise funds within 20 minutes or one phone call. So there's, that's why that is there. Mr. Chair, if, yes. if I may uh, ask, um, I'm not quite sure if I understood you correctly. Um, are you saying that these recommendations, right. the way they are, we either approve or disapprove? Or we, uh, this is the recommendation of the subcommittee to the commission. We might approve this, but if we want to recommend to the city council, uh, are you saying that we should not change it just because of that? Or if we think something is necessary, like what uh, my colleague was uh, uh, recommending, we still have the right to do that? I, I, I'm going to refer that to Mr. Grant. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commission members, you can certainly modify the recommendations and alter the recommendations and you know, partially accept them and, then, and modify them as well and make in your recommendation to the City Council. That's what my impression, but I thought that we, it's either you know, black or white. Okay. Well, if I may, and this is coming from Mr. Tertatevosian. He definitely needs $50,000 seed money, and he definitely, definitely needs a, a, a fundraising committee from within the city, not the city government itself, but people living or working in this city to help raise the other fifty to $70,000. So all told, I think it, it's about 120,000, 115, 20,000 that he's expecting from this local network here. Right, and and I mean to to put to put the commissioners who are uh, to put us in, in that position as fundraising the fundraising committee is I think a little dangerous yeah. to begin with. Um, His expectation is usually that the people even in the fundraising committee donate money, substantial amounts of money for this. So practically we are talking about probably two motions, one to approve the subcommittee's uh, uh, recommendation to us, and then we formulate our own recommendation to the city council. Am I correct? No. We can't. No, we can't do that. <laughs> I don't think necessarily um, that it has to be done in two motions. You certainly can do one motion. <laughs> if it is exactly the same. No. You can, you can, you can again. Your motion to the city council can take into account certain points that were recommended by the subcommittee, and in formulating your own motion. For example, you could say uh, that you're recommending to the city council that they consider uh, the request of uh, his for the competition, and to rec- uh, also to consider his uh, request for a fundraising committee and alternate sources of funding. So you you can modify it or accept it as is. Okay. in your motion to the council. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Is there anyone willing to dare take a motion at this? <laughs> well, I would like to move that uh, we approve the subcommittee's recommendation to us. I think this is a great project to move forward. And um, I would like to somewhat, very slightly modify the um, uh, recommendation to include uh, Commissioner Wagner's uh, uh, recommendation that you know the city doesn't have to directly contribute as long as they find the f- fifty thousand seed money uh, uh, to to help him start. Okay. The second motion is it? Is that the motion? Right. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, there now it's open to more discussion now, right? <laughs> should do that first. I know. <laughs> Okay, any other comments? Last minute? I know. Uh, Commissioner Gregorian, yeah. one, one thing that I think that um, Rips may mention that uh, in, in the uh, a report version, she did modify it slightly in, in discussing it that 
Um, there is a direction to the Parks Department to negotiate the business details and the profit loss um, <coughs> part of it. Right now it reads that the city attorney is directed to draft an agreement that contains those terms and conditions, but actually it would have to be, if the council gives approval to this, then there would need direction to the Parks Department to negotiate the business details such as you know profit and loss and, and uh, other things such as that. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm recommending. I'm recommending this, the entire three points in there with a couple of minor uh, mod modifications. Yeah, that's the motion. Uh, I, I won't be able to uh, recommend that. I will be voting no, uh, not that because I don't want uh, competition here. But for other reasons, like, first of all, nobody ever talked about the actual artistic value of this thing. You know, it, I mean, Commissioner Gregorian mentioned the, the benefit it would bring to uh, businesses, but that's, that's not my interest here. Sitting here, I, I, don't, I don't care about that. The other thing is Glendale Arts is mentioned. Are they going to be – I don't even know whether they're functioning or not. Uh, how can they be the ones that are uh, uh, they're, uh, looking into the accounts of this? Is that what somebody said, right? Am I, am I correct, or did I miss I it, here? It's Glendale Arts, which is the organization that used to be the Alex Theater, uh, which would serve as the fiduciary organization for this. Um, so the money would, would go into Glendale Arts, who would then keep accounting of it. Well, I have no, no knowledge of uh, uh, Glendale Arts, how co competent they are, how good they are. I know, I know that whenever uh, several times I've... Uh, try to update our information about our plays into their website and it hasn't happened. So it's, if they're that, uh, I don't know who they are and what they do. Uh, I mean, I know who they are. I don't know how good they are. And uh, so that's another reason where uh, I will be voting no if... Uh if you, if uh, Commissioner Sepan, if I may clarify, uh, Glendale Arts is the organization that is the uh, successor to um, Alex Theatre Board, and they have uh, they run the Alex Theatre. And since this competition is going to be uh, held at Alex Theatre at several nights, uh, they are, uh, regardless of whatever their role would be on the planning process, they will be involved into this because of the fact that it's going to be held at the Alex Theater. And uh, it seems that the subcommittee and Mr. Dertatevosian have um, decided that uh, including them in advance and m having them to manage these funds would be beneficial to this entire process. Let, let me also say that we had some questions about his nonprofit status. Uh, there were some name changes currently, so his current status was pending. Um, so it was, I think, easier and safer for it to go through Glendale Arts as an organization that's known in the city, that's dealt with the city before. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it's going through Glendale Arts. Um, am I to assume then that Glendale Arts is, is as an organization, supportive of this endeavor? It's, have they had some members on this committee as well? <laughs> No, they have not, not had the, the member uh, members on this committee. Not, not, not on the, not on the committee. But, but they have been in constant uh, talks uh, with with Mr. Tatavosian, and they've they've actually helped him steer the thing in the right direction. I mean, in terms of who to contact and so forth. And can you tell us? I, I think I've heard this, but I'd like to hear it again from your work on the committee. Uh, Pasadena's experience was was a great experience, a, a good experience? Did, did they uh, get the benefits that we hope to, to get as a city by putting on this uh, well, competition? I, I think it goes without saying that if they weren't happy with the product, and unfortunately we do have to think about it kind of in both terms, uh, and I mean the product in terms of artistic value and in business value, that if it wasn't successful, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have invited them back in 2005 and in 2008. So I mean there's something to be said for that. Um, if, if the quality was not good. I mean I, I, can't, I can't speak specifically for myself but just, just by the sheer facts we can look at it and say and, something and, is right. And remind us, because I think we heard this last time, why is he not expecting to go to Pasadena again in 2010 or 11? I, I wouldn't be able to give you the straight answer for that because I don't know, quite frankly. Uh, I think he, he is in, he's, he's in discussions or he's trying to contact Pasadena for another event. Um, but this is a junior competition. I think the one in Pasadena may be a different event. Right. It, it, it could be, okay. it, yeah, it could be the adult version. The adult version. Right, which, which is what he's been doing since 2002. 
Okay. Right. He he does it he, every three years. He has the piano competition, the international big uh, piano competition, and uh, he wants to get this one started. And Mayor Bogar said that the community, I think, um, the event was well received by the community interested in the arts. Was his his quote? Absolutely. So. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Let's have a roll call, please. Commissioner Stepanian? No. Lee? Yes. Dero Venetian? Yes. Solis? Yes. Wagner? Yes. Gregorian? Yes. Chairperson Kayvanian? Yes. Next item, please. Thank you. 5B reports at 5B1 Arts Tune Up Glendale 2009 final report. So that we go to Herb Smith again. Yes. As you know, um, the Los Angeles County Arts Commission and the Cultural Affairs Section of Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Department presented an arts tune-up workshop for individual artists and small-budget art organizations on Saturday, October 24, 2009, at the Glendale Civic Auditorium. This free event was designed to put artists and art organizations in contact with art consultants, working artists, and administrators who provided information and answered questions on a variety of topics, including fundraising and marketing, health insurance for artists, public art, and much more. There were 15 presenters in total, providing practical information and resources on a variety of art-related topics, such as advocacy, art education in school resources and working in arts education, grant writing, cultural and community organizing, licensing for visual artists, to mention a few. The program drew over 100 participants from throughout the county, including Glendale, Pasadena, Long Beach, Chatsworth, Santa Monica, Burbank, Inglewood, and Woodland Hills. 97% of respondents to web survey reported they were satisfied or highly satisfied with the event, and 96% indicated they would uh, recommend the arts tune up to others. For the first time, um, um, as we talked about um, the licensing topic, I presented this um, sub, uh, topic to the participants, which was um, very well received. Um, uh, Commissioner Lee was in attendance, and uh, I would really like him to share also his um, uh, views on, on the workshop. Uh, we had very active participating um, artists and organizations. And um, as some of the surveys um, indicated that um, the, um, the presentation uh, was very helpful and it received highly satisfied or um, um, very satisfied remarks from participants. So that's my final report. And so to add to that, I, I thought it was a very, very, very good event. Um, I went there a few minutes earlier just to see how it's set up. Everything is set up, professional. Um, I, I, I personally was really proud to walk in and to be there because uh, basically we, you know, I, I, I hate to use the term, but we got a free ride. <laughs> we, they, they added our name to the function by just helping them find a location, but they know how to run the event. Um, they, they, each section was set up correctly. They had round tables. Um, each speaker, you know, they were able to, to get their point across and to be able to help <coughs> help artists, and, you know, teaching them how to fundraise, how, how to sell their art. I mean, it, it was very informative. Uh, although I didn't stay the whole time, you know, the, the the few minutes that I was there, I was able to listen in a, uh, on a few of them, and you know, they're very precise. And I, I I think it's a very good program, and and I would definitely be supporting us to do uh, more with the LA County Arts Commission to to do more of these, especially in Glendale. Um, my, my goal is to hit all our artists uh, in Glendale to be able to help or find out from them what type of help and to set up that kind of seminar or 
or uh, one-on-one uh, to to be able to help the artists to be able to survive and how how to do the business how, how you know what to do where to do who to go to you know things like that so i, I you know it, it it really touched me to to see that program I I just wanted to say again I was sorry to miss it I ha- I did have a chance the last time it was in town but I had a school board workshop at LA County yeah I got your but email thank you I wanted to thank you for your part in, and your for your workshop yes I think I I, I was very excited um, actually LA County Commission they approached me and they said um, because of the survey they made and at the response they received they would like me to go with them from now on to their other arts and culture <laughs> tour. This is a traveling workshop tour, as you know, and take this um, topic to other cities, which is very exciting. Um, one of the participants was Carmen Flores, who had a, pre- a presentation today, and she had very good words <laughs> about that. Some of the um, artists actually came twice back to the table to hear more information. I think this is one area that hasn't been really explored by the artists and we had a lot of information, very useful information for them. Hopefully um, we'll, we will be able to do it over and over in the future. My wife did go and she was quite uh, satisfied with, with the thing. Great. That's the whole idea. The parking was provided uh, for free um, by parks, and um, there were f- refreshments for everybody. Everybody actually enjoyed, and they had a good time. Presenters, they were professional um, art administrators and um, experts in their area, and uh, they, some of them, they were um, in Glendale for the first time. They thought the space was very, very um, nice, and um, I, I have to uh, thank the staff from the Civic Auditorium who were there um, helping everybody, all the participants, um, in the outside parking area and inside. So it was very well organized. Went well. Other comments? Actually, this is one of the things I, when I got on on, on the commission, I was like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what is an, what is an opportunity to get you know, artists out of the woodworks. How do we get them out of their studios and into the community and, and to mingle with each other and to learn? And this is this is why I was so adamant about. Once I became chair, I was like, we got to push this um, because it's it's so vital for the artists to get out there and to be aware of these different things. Licensing, who would have thought? But uh, is an art free. But. Uh, well, the workshop was very um, helpful, uh, not only in educational um, sense, but also, like you said, um, it was very um, um, useful for them to network and make connections. Uh, we learned so much from the artists and from other presenters about other uh, small festivals, art and craft um, uh, projects, everything else that maybe it's a good idea for us to bring it to our city. Mm-hmm. So it has uh, many fold uh, benefits. I had friends attending as well, artists in the community. More than 100 artists, yes. They were very pleased. They said <coughs> that the information was really valuable. Some from the district, some from, from community friends that I have in the field. Great. Again, you know. glad, that, glad that we did this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item, please. At 5B2, Temporary Art Galleries, Vacant Storefront, storefront Art Display Project in Downtown Glendale, Information Only. Again, to her name. Information only. Well, we're very excited about this project. Um, in September um, 22nd, City Council meeting, Council Member Laura Friedman directed staff to research information on vacant storefront art display programs for downtown Glendale. To eliminate the impact of increasing number of empty storefronts in their downtown districts, some cities implement art display programs and create temporary art gallery projects to enhance the attractiveness of the vacancies, draw additional uh, foot traffic and potentially attract leases to the vacant spaces. Um, Staff has been working together with uh, redevelopment and planning agency and we contacted several communities who currently implement the art display programs in storefront vacant spaces. 
and identified a two um, exhibition concepts. Um, I would not go into the details about this concept. I'm still getting some information from other communities about different uh, programs that they're uh, using today, but a full report will be prepared and presented to the council um, to, to get more direction um, from them. So this is something that we are excited about working on to um, give opportunity to artists to show their artwork and also it will it might be another opportunity for our nonprofit art organizations like Brand Association who has um, um, purchased a word collection, more than 100 art pieces, uh, which will give them an opportunity to show this um, collection during um, a storefront art display program if we start in Glendale soon. Do we take questions, Mr. Oh, Booth? I, Since it's I information just only. I just have a, a, a piece of information to add to your information, okay. which, you, which you may remember, because I can't remember if you were on the brand associates yes, at that time. Uh, Arlene Vidor, I believe, did a, a presentation. She, she I already did, contacted oh, okay, her. Okay, yes. because I know she made contacts and, and did some work on it. So oh, Yes, actually, yes. Um, she did uh, make some presentations and gave us some information about companies, third-party companies, who are specialized in doing storefront displays. One of the companies that our Arlene gave to us no longer are in business, but we were able to locate another gallery who has a contract with um, a Long Beach Redevelopment Agency, and they've been very, very successful with their program, and they have done in Pasadena, Long Beach, other cities. So we've been working with in different areas to see which one will be the best for our city. Uh, we do consider a third party uh, to take over and with minimal uh, involvement of city staff. They will uh, choose the artist, uh, um, locate uh, the businesses, um, do the exhibitions and so on and take care of the insurance. There are so many areas that we are still learning. Um, yes. Is there a special designated area for the storefront uh, stores? Well, or two years ago when um, uh, Brand Association and City of Glendale, while I was uh, working with Brand Association, um, it didn't succeed, the project didn't succeed because there was no interest from the local businesses to provide their empty spaces for these kind of exhibitions. So we have to go around and um, ask um, and give them incentives. I don't know. We are really um, trying to understand which, how to approach to make them um, get interested in to be part of this project. That's the main thing for us to uh, uh, solve. Because find interested businesses because who would like to provide their space for art displays. Once upon a time, there was a discussion that a certain area of the city well, it would be allocated for that kind of... So is this still following the same, or it's just a different thing? It, I mean, actually, we have learned there are different concepts. One will be just um, having exhibition like vitrines, and um, public can just view this artwork. The other concept will be when... Um, these empty spaces will become a temporary art galleries where public can go and buy art. And there are some other um, concepts as well. We would like to have all the details um, in hand and make the um, full report available for you, um, for the council, of course. Thank you, first. I really want to avoid making a discussion, but... You know, uh, overall, this is an excellent idea for several very good reasons. But uh, it has some pitfalls also. And one of the main ones is that the uh, commercial owners of buildings who have vacant spaces, they are kind of reluctant to do this because they th might think that um, that exhibition will kind of hinder their opportunity to rent it out or lease it out to a kind of a more permanent and more better paying uh, uh, tenant. So uh, what we come up with really has to make sure that we have a mechanism to uh, convince the store owners or the uh, uh, commercial space owners of you know the 
benefits that it might bring them. So that's that's something that is very important to 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 uh, uh, research and come up with a very viable report. But overall, um, of course, a city that has many uh, vacant commercial spaces kind of looks run down and uh, somehow blighted. And um, on the other hand, if we have exhibition spaces and things, it will uh, enhance the quality of that area. So it is, it is kind of a double-edged uh, sword in that sense. And, um, but overall, it's an excellent idea. The important thing is what is included in that report and how it is presented to the property owners. That's the, that's the most important thing, in my opinion. And um, uh, I think uh, one thing, the question that I had from you is, is this going to go directly to the city council, or it has to come here and then go to the city council? It has to go to the city council. The, directly to the city council. Hmm. Are there special perks offered for those property owners to let their storefronts or their property to be in the very beginning stages we're just learning who takes care of the insurance um, if the artist has to come with their own insurance or the property um, has to come up with any money there are so many other issues that we have to learn and you know that's that's one of the pitfalls I was talking about. It's a matter of insurance, the matter of the space being given the uh, impression that it is not vacant, and also the utilities and who runs the place. Um, you know all kinds of other issues that property owners might be reluctant, and that's these are the issues that have to be addressed in this uh, uh, complete report. And I uh, talked to the lady who owns Phantom Galleries um, in Laguna <coughs> Beach, uh, in Long Beach, I'm sorry, um, who works with the city. And for her, maybe in the future, we might ask her to come and do a presentation. This way you will have uh, all your questions um, ready for her and give us more understanding, more information about the project. Would you any, uh, need anything from us, from any of uh, our sources, to help you on the report? Um, at, at this time, any information that you think will be helpful, please go ahead and email me. Um, I think we have a very good team um, with the redevelopment and um, planning department who are <laughs> working with me on this. Okay. That's an excellent idea. I, I really hope that it will succeed. All right. Any other comments, questions? Yeah. Are we commenting or not commenting? I'm not well, sure. Well, it, it's really, <laughs> really just questions. Sorry. That was a mental slip on my part. Thank you for catching that. Uh, next item, please. Item six, commission and staff comments. Now we are commenting. Now we are commenting. So. <clears throat> Nothing with me? Yeah. We can if you'd like. Why would these businesses be interested in this project if the, this city especially the city council and especially Mr. Dave Weaver forever is de are denigrating arts, we're belittling it. Why would they be interested or respect that when and uh, anything that Arts and Culture Commission can say when, when we are not in any way important to the city or anybody else it seems. And why would, why is it that then Ms. Friedman expects the Arts and Culture Commission to work for businesses when businesses don't work for us and it's you know it is it is very naive if not foolish to think that the art and arts and culture commission do, that has been shifted to two o'clock and it's, its meetings are cancelled uh, at any time uh, that uh, nothing uh, no one says anything and it, the meetings are cancelled then what we'll have the authority the power the uh, the uh, where with all the budget to help businesses. Every single time we, uh, somebody talks about an art, artistic art endeavor in this city, whether it's Mona or the, um, uh, the Rachmaninoff, uh, and, uh, it's, it's to do to help businesses. And nobody, neither the city uh, or businesses actually in any way respect the arts and culture. Why should, why should you know, and now, uh, Ms. Friedman wants us to help this project. How can we do it? We have no power. We have no uh, prestige. We have no nothing. 
we have no uh, and, and uh, with the Damocles sword of uh, the abolition of this commission over our heads and, and uh, commissioners being uh, taken off the uh, commission and so on why, why is it that uh, somehow then we, we are it's like uh, I give you a lesson from history uh, <clears throat> by the Byzantine Empire Mr. destroyed Chair. Armenia. Yes. During this Excuse time. me, I'm sorry, I need to say this. Uh, and it, 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 they then Commissioner they Stepanian, I have to warn Turkish, you that this time uh, uh, you could be subject to a Brown Act violation, hmm? which would be a fine and and, and Brown Act violation for what? Yes, I'm because during this time, no, well, during this time, it's a brief comment, announcements, questions, but they're brief comments, um, but not necessarily um, a, a lengthy one. So, do you, you, uh, what what is the the time that Brown Act allows? The act. I mean, what is brief comment? What is the time that Brown Act allows? Typically, it's generally questions and brief announcements, and not necessarily um, a uh, your thoughts or opinions on, on on certain items. Are you so. uh, this this is so? Uh, my thoughts cannot be uh, like if I somebody says you can comment, that cannot be uh, uh, my thoughts. It can what be, but it has, be, it has to be it has to be very very brief, and really anything that's going over re about two minutes now is too long. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, um, <clears throat> any other comments, questions, announcements? I'll go next. <clears throat> okay. Very brief and to the point. For all those who um, who, who uh, want to enjoy a tree lighting ceremony, it's tonight at the Americana. Um, there's going to be fireworks. So for all those who have pets, make sure you know you you know what to do with it with the pets. Um, I think it's, it's it's a very good thing for the city, for 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 a non for a, a private. Uh, company to do this type of exhibit uh, to uh, you know in the city of Glendale, especially with fireworks. So make sure uh, it's uh, supposed to start at 7:30 at the Americana. That's the tree lighting ceremony. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you for following that one up. Uh, <laughs> uh, any other comments, Mr. Gregorian? Oh, Commissioner Wagner, go ahead. Um. Well, I will just comment that I'm very pleased that there's renewed interest in arts in the temporary, uh, yeah, in temporary galleries. Um, I will miss both tree lighting events. Tonight we have the uh, a Measure K celebration at Hoover High School, thanking all of the folks who helped us pass the bond in 1997 and the near completion of our Measure K work. Um, and then the city tree lighting event for which I just got an invitation. It f also falls within our annual school board conference. So we missed that one too but um, I, I'll have to send a note to Patty Bettencourt and wish her well and all the other staff that's putting that together. It's, it's a fun event. Um, I would just encourage people to check the Glendale, the Glendale Unified School District website for holiday events coming up Choirs and bands, and and I know there's a play going on, Twelve Angry Men, at Hoover, uh, this week and next, I believe, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Commissioner um, Gorin. Uh, one brief report and a couple of uh, announcements. Um, Not this past Friday, but the Friday before, or on Saturday before. What was it? Uh, November, November 7th. 7th. Yes. November 7th, there was a major uh, event at the Pasadena um, Armenian Center uh, honoring uh, an internationally known local artist by the name of Emil Kazaz. Uh, there was a... Um, uh, a, a seminar, uh, you know, his life, his uh, works, um, um, a, a couple of people from different places and the USC art specialist kind of analyzed his work. Uh, it was attended by hundreds of people. There were at least probably more than 200 to, three, two to 300 uh, people in, in, in the audience. And um, Emil received um, not only uh, a high recognition from uh, the um, 
uh, the AGBU. Uh, he also received um, um, a very high uh, achievement in arts honor from the Armenian um, uh, uh, Catholicos in uh, in Echmiadzin, and also um, he received um, uh, all kinds of awards from all kinds of local uh, politicians and uh, 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 entities. And Ripsime and I had the honor of uh, presenting him the. Uh, um, uh, award uh, from the mayor of Glendale, Mr. Mayor Quintero, for his achievements. Uh, so it was an incredibly interesting event. Uh, many speakers, uh, many uh, performers. Um, you know, one of our favorite performers that performed in our um, Man's Humanity to Man exhibition, Mr. Vache Mankerian, was there, and he performed an excellent piece by Bach that uh, mesmerized everybody. Uh, so it overall it was an incredibly nice uh, elaborate and classy evening of arts and music and uh, 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 honoring of an internationally known artist. And who, I must <coughs> add, he is a Glendale resident. He is a, yes, exactly. He is a Glendale resident. That's why we are so proud to announce that here. And uh, he, most of his work were in, at exhibit, and his works sell from anywhere from a few thousand dollars to, I think the most expensive one was don't drop off your seats, $490,000. Um, and actually, he was selling. He was selling a lot of stuff. So I w it was an incredibly nice evening. Uh, and uh, I congratulate Mr. Kazaz and all the organizers of this event because I think these artists of this caliber need to be recognized, need, need to be honored, and need to be uh, you know, publicized a lot more in the community. And hopefully we will have uh, similar things with the other artists, the other major, major, major artists that live in Glendale. Hopefully we can organize uh, probably several things for that. That's the uh, uh, that's the, was what uh, a, a brief report, and just a couple of very brief announcements. The Brand Library and Art Galleries have an ongoing exhibition uh, of five artists. Um, uh, one of them uh, that I know is a local Glendale resident, Sir Puhi Abadjan. The other four artists are Rene Azenaro, Matthew Kramer, Don Saban, and John Smith. And this exhibition is called Metropolis: Prospects and Observations. It is ongoing. It will be go, going until December 11th at the Brand Gallery and Art uh, Brand, Brand Library and Art Galleries at Brand Park. It's really a nice exhibition. I recommend everybody to see it. And also, I would like to remind what was presented to us earlier that on uh, December 6th and uh, December 13th, we have this Red Rabbit Holiday Arts and Crafts Market at the Descanso Gardens. So I invite all the. Um, uh, community to participate in this too and all the other art events that uh, occurs during this holiday season. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions? Yes. I, I, I forgot that we uh, didn't have a meeting last month. I wanted to thank the general public for coming out to the Unity Festival. We had a very, very good attendance um, very good support from the community, and uh, the, there was a strong, uh, very strong attendance at the festival on brand. Uh, that was in uh, on October, October 11th, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I was there and enjoyed all the festivities there, the stage show, the kids stuff, um, the farmers market. Uh, thank you for to to Councilman. Uh, Draymond for being able to bring it, bring down the Montrose um, Farmers Market and the boutiques uh, that that really add to the Unity Festival itself. Uh, thank you to staff, uh, Zazette in particular, who been able to help us mastermind the the project at, at hand, um, and our, by our other commissioner Jarlene for being on the committee and and, and myself being on the committee. So uh, thank you. And and former commissioner Zen Correct. Lopez who did so much. I also wanted to particularly thank the staff. I, that staff that was out there setting up those booths way before I got there and working to the end seemingly cheerily. I they I think people really it, it's a fun thing and they worked really hard and they they did it with uh, good spirit, and it, it really was a pleasure to be there. So, thank you. 
Great. Commissioner Solis. I'll go after you. The young man. Oh, you want to go? Well, I just want to say that recently at a, at a city meeting, um, a, a, a fellow commissioner got up and stated that I had missed eight out of ten commission meetings. And I got many calls saying, what's going on? Why would you miss that many meetings? Um, I haven't missed that many meetings. Our, our chairperson got the attendance. I've missed four. But um, I just didn't appreciate uh, someone going up at a city meeting. It had nothing to do with it. They just got up and said, Amateur Solis has missed eight out of ten of the last commission meetings. In front of a room full of about 50 people. So I just want to state on the record that I have not missed eight meetings. I've missed four, and uh, that's half of eight. <laughs> and uh, I just want to put that out there and hope, hopefully it doesn't happen again. But you might, you might have missed uh, eight Conrad's dinners, though. Yeah. Oh, and also, please, everyone, patronize Conrad's. <laughs> it's one of Glendale's <laughs> finest establishments. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Captain, do you have a comment? Um, as you all know, uh, Duke Majin uh, Wilderness Park was burned recently. Um, just to let you know, we, we've been in discussion with a group who is interested in doing art from ashes. Um, what they will do is they'll go in there and they'll pick up some material, including ash, uh, and maybe some tin cans and things like that, and, and uh, create some artwork uh, that we will be exhibiting um, months from now, but we're in very preliminary uh, discussions with them, and potentially in a storefront somewhere in the downtown. Um, so just look for that. We'll, we'll come back with a report for you on that. So we think it's going to be exciting. They've done one uh, from the Santa Barbara burns, the Santa Barbara fires, and uh, very successful, very nice work, artwork from them. Just a little note, I wish the barn was open for this kind of exhibitions, and if one day we do that, that would be a great, great space for any exhibition and gallery. Awesome. So can we, can we, we, we aim for that? Yeah, well, we are um, we're looking for money to finish the barn. Most of the money that came from the barn came from the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy state money. No general fund money has ever been used for the barn. We think we have some potential leads um, to finish off the barn as an interpretive center, and we are going to go after that grant money. So hopefully we'll get it. That would be nice. I really encourage you to pursue that we are, as we, vigorously as you can. We are. Good. Can we put the in? Um, it has nothing to do with art, but talking about the park being burnt, really, it's a, maybe it's not the place, but we need to thank our um, city and the fire department and our fire chiefs and our, all the people who work in that department. I live in La Crescenta. I know how horrible it was, the fear and the way these people worked day and night. Uh, we could see them all around, and we are so grateful. Now they have become the friends of the community. Anybody sees any fire truck or any fireman, we all <laughs> wave, and they have become our best friends. Friends, thank you for all of them for and the services. And hopefully from the remnants of such a sad situation, we could have some artifacts, some artwork that could remind the world of what happened. I didn't know that that was the biggest in the United States. I thought that was for the current time. It was the biggest fire. But I heard in the news that it was the biggest ever. Commissioner Wagner? I, I just wanted to put in a thank you for... Uh, the years of service from Richard Espinoza. Oh, yes. And happy Thanksgiving to him, too. Welcome to our... Uh, yeah, you and welcome <laughs> to our new... Uh, the wonderful ladies who are here. did a thank great you. job. Um, they did. Kind of stole my fire. I was going to thank Richard, of course, <laughs> for his uh, years of uh, working with us. And introduce the ladies. I, I, I'm gonna leave, I was going to leave that to Herb's me all the way at the end. The best it was last. Yes, my mistake not oh, to that, introduce Miriam okay. and Iris from the beginning. Miriam um, Movsesian works in the parks and she will be helping us from now on with the minutes with all our Arts and Culture Commission meetings. Um, Iris uh, works for the parks and does the um, Parks Recreation Commission meetings. She's been helping Miriam to get uh, familiar with the program. There are Great. two gems in our department so we very lucky to have them. You have many gems in your department, <laughs> Mr. Chapter. Yes. These are only two of them. And they look like <coughs> sisters, you know. <laughs> That's a Haven't you been told? <laughs> um, I, I was just going to mention several other things. Number one, I wish I really knew about the Emil Kaza's tribute. Uh, kind of sad I didn't go. And I also, I, all these thanks going around, it's, uh, it is Thanksgiving. Um, I want to thank the, actually the staff for um, the work that they did on the Rachmaninoff uh, Piano Competition Subcommittee. That took a lot of work. 
a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, making sure everybody's on the same page. Especially Teresa. Teresa did a fantastic job. She's she, she's been she, working on a report day and night and right. answering his calls and emails. Right, and as a joke, I, I call her now senior analyst instead of just <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so <laughs> just in title, just in title. I don't I don't sign the checks, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, great again, great job, great job, and hopefully we'll have a great turnout in the competition. And uh, with that, move on to the next item. Item seven: written communications. None. Really? Surprising. And then finally, next item, adjournment. We're adjourned? Is everybody agree to that? Okay, let's do that then.